And now, join your hosts, Keith Reynolds and Charlene Chamberlain. Well, good morning. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee. I'm here with my lovely show host, Charlene Chamberlain. Char, good morning. I did not get the dress down day memo this morning. I'm Keith. sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. I, you know what? My little four-year-old brought me the tie when I was ironing my clothes. And she said, Daddy, Aww. you have to wear this. And I was like... Daddy's tired of wearing ties. I think after last... that whole tie discussion we had <laughs> yeah. yesterday, he is a tie hoarder. Yes, I am a tie hoarder. I, I he ties. buys them, he hides them. Uh, you probably <laughs> have two secrets. or three at the same time in your closet. Uh, don't even no, know. No, I don't it. get that. Like a girl, right? <laughs> close, though. Close, close. Right. So I just said it's got to be dressed down today. I want to be relaxed. Uh, okay, well, I, okay. Which I, usually I have my sandals on, so does that count? That counts. That okay, counts. good. <laughs> so what do we got going on today? We have a very, very important topic. What'd you today? say? I can't hear yeah, you. exactly, Keith. You have that male uh, selective hearing thing uh, happening. No, that has nothing to do with medical. Oh, uh, yeah, right. absolutely. It has to do with women. Oh, no, okay. <laughs> and your wife. There you go. There and you your go. on air wife. <laughs> sure. Yeah, there we go. Um, it is a very important topic and it affects so many yes. people and I feel that a lot of um, men and women don't want to admit that they might be experiencing hearing loss or a hearing problems. So our guests today are Dr. Gail Angelelli and Dr. Ruth Brenner of Audiology Partners of Marlton and we're right. going to talk about the different types of hearing loss, what causes hearing loss, and some of the ways to fix the problem or help with the problem. So welcome to Morning Coffee. It's welcome, nice to have welcome. you here. Welcome. Nice you. to be here. Yeah, thank you. You know, I, you said a few things about hearing and I, we were talking before the show. You know, I think it is that people just, there's no meter. Like if we were talking about glasses. Mm -hmm. If I can't see something 20 feet away from me, hey, there's something You wrong. can't see it. But right. hearing, you don't really know. You can't, there's no measure to where you say, Man, that person, you know, were they whispering right. when they said it? You, just, you have to rely yeah. on the other person right. to mm -hmm. tell you. Right. And so that's yeah. why they're waiting. You know, that's one of the things we were talking about is that these, uh, most people are waiting seven to ten years before they actually address their hearing. Their family and is telling wow. about them much sooner than right. that, right. but they're not willing to do anything. And, and then I imagine if it's a particular cause to it, they're waiting seven to ten years and it's just still you know maybe it's like a person that's working in a, a machine factory or something right and seven or ten years is just, or a concert it's killing their hearing and they right. just don't get it but just the aging process yes um, we yes. kind of wear out our hair cells in our inner ear because they're always moving and, and carrying sound mm -hmm. and by the time you get to be 60 70 or 80 years they actually wear out and Wait so that's wow. the beginning of hearing loss and we call that Crespicusis, which is the, the hearing loss related to aging. So you don't, you know, maybe you weren't ever exposed to noise or had any risk factors that would cause hearing loss. You could just have a hearing loss that's related, and that's what we see mostly, is the, the hearing loss related to aging. Not now, necessarily damage. Right, now, and right. when you talk about hair, it's not the hairs that come no, out of the guy's No, these hair ears, cells right? are little nerve fibers oh, that okay. vibrate, and when they vibrate, uh, they carry the sound to the brain. And that was what we were thinking uh, about talking about because one of the re risk factors of uh, hearing loss now they're showing is that there's a greater risk of dementia. Makes sense. Uh, with people with hearing loss. So we know we're going to have, uh, after 60, there's going to be some form of hearing loss. And there was a study by Dr. Lynn uh, in um, John Hopkins. John Hopkins. Right. And that showed that within. Um, you know, anyone with even a mild hearing loss had greater cognitive decline over time. Really? And if the more severe the hearing loss, the more severe the cognitive decline. And his later follow-up study um, even showed that there was a shrinkage in the brain, the MRI studies. The brain matter. Yeah. Whoa. That's for scary. For people with hearing loss. Not and again, it. greater for those who had hearing, more severe hearing loss than those who had normal hearing. Well, we had, you know, we had the uh, folks from the Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's Association, Association and she yeah. said that it shrinks the brain. Now, you're, you're kind of connecting those, so it's right. got to be something that we're doing to ourselves. I don't, we don't know what, but it's got to be something. I mean, well, I mean, I guess yeah. aging, I mean, there is that aging factor. Well, it. it's the social isolation. You know, what happens with dementia is that you, you, you're cut off from the world, mm -hmm. and right. so it can be either auditory or visual. Um, we were talking, uh, my mother had visual issues as she mm -hmm. got older and she would go into almost like a dream state 
So when I would come in, she would say, uh, hi, Gail, uh, are you on the boat? Oh me? my gosh. Because she couldn't separate her dream from reality. And that's part of the dementia. If you have a hearing loss, you're sitting there, you can't communicate with anyone, right. and, and you're having the same kind of problems. You, you, um, you, know, you, everything just kind of breaks down, and you have no form, no social uh, interactions. Um, you, you develop depression and anxiety, and all those, you know, and you're not getting any input, so you have a physical change in the brain. I think when we were talking a little bit before before the show, um, Dr. Ruth said that it actually changes the way your brain processes the information because it's not coming in the way it normally would come in and your, your brain so organizes the information. Right? You know, if, it, if you're getting a clear signal, your brain organizes the information in, in certain hemispheres. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when you don't get the signal, you have to work harder and therefore the brain is working harder to, to figure out what's being said. Right. Yeah. And that puts so much effort that they can't process what's going around them. Wow. And, um, and you know, that's, you, that's so fascinating what you what you're talking about too, because you know they say that music therapy, you know what I mean, with the right volume, but mm -hmm. music therapy, you Can know, re reorganize. It, yeah, it, I do a program uh, with children. I love it. It's called the listening program, uh -huh. and oh, that's uh, yeah, Let's it actually that was minute. music that's been, that actually they've recorded, and it stimulates all different areas of the brain, and they listen to it for forty week period. And we can reorganize the brain with, for auditory processing. Now, let me ask you a question. You know, as far as testing at an early age, you know, I remember uh, elementary school. Oh my gosh, we had to go the down. We had the hearing test. Yeah. And then that's the last test you probably ever had, right? That was the last test we ever had. <laughs> right. But, that, that's the problem. Isn't you know, it? I mean, you know, that is, and, right. and the last really well. The eye doctor until I couldn't See. stop seeing See. the club signs when my buddy said, "Hey, you just missed our exit. We need to be in the bar." Right, but that'd be more <laughs> like forty, I, right? Yeah, that's but, like about forty, and then I was like, "We're oh. getting seventy. Right. So, so why is I, that's what my problem with all you know waiting to this age is that, and why we're trying to get out there is that you've got ten, seven to ten years of cognitive decline. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're doing Lumosity, we're doing all these different programs. You know, my age, the baby boomer age, we want to maintain our our cognitive abilities. Right. So we're doing all these things and we're forgetting a big component which is the hearing loss. And it's not component. listed as one as the of one No, of not the even one of the risk Well, factors. I know and I was going to you know, I was just going to say, you know, when you get your notice for your annual checkup, that's not really listed. Well, you were saying about yeah, the there doctors is a new, now. there is a new requirement uh, I believe with Medicare for with primary doctors Medicare, that they're supposed okay. to at least ask about your hearing. Right. Yeah. Um, what I want to say is that, you know, if if somebody lost their hearing um, overnight they're at our door oh, in, yes, in no time right. at all right. because they know it's, something it, it's wrong. changed. Right. Right. But because this right. happens a slow process over mm -hmm. time, it's people right. just find a ways of, co of coping. Right. coping. And then I guess it gets to a point where they can't cope and then it, that's when it really, that's really why comes. They're or they're starting, to, they're starting to you know, regress or, or um, you know, not be able to communicate or mm -hmm. pulling themselves out of things that they used to like to do. Uh, and just kind of sitting in the house, and then they don't even want to watch television. So you're seeing this whole, you know, change in the person's behavior. Right. Okay. And, well, I, and, and, and I guess it maybe has to be a little bit annoying for the other people that live with the family members absolutely. because they are either yelling at them or they're saying things that don't make any sense, and then you're like, that's not what I said. Yes, that is what you, I mean. Well, that oftentimes and, is yeah, what brings I'm people sure. in our door. Yeah, right. because The person like, really has to want to do something yeah. about it themselves. Right. They can't do it for some other reasons, for mm -hmm. other people. All right, we're, we're going to take a quick commercial break and move right back. In a world where bankers have lost all interest, where robots and fat cats rule our fortunes, one woman Hi. will stand up and strive to do the impossible. Be treated like a person. Friends and neighbors will join her quest. Ordinary people will band together against the forces of corporate greed. And together, they will form Philadelphia Federal Credit Union, already in a neighborhood near you. Imagine the finest hand-selected USDA prime steak you'll ever have. The freshest line-caught seafood. Our Wine Spectator award-winning wine list and soul-satisfying desserts. Bring that together with the perfect date. The winning business deal. A memorable family celebration. Welcome to Rod's Steak and Seafood Grill in nearby Morristown, New Jersey. Bring your appetite and feed your passion. Your credit score is yours, and at Experian Credit Expert, we want to help you really use it. 
With access to helpful Experian experts over the phone and online, we can help you use it to get a better idea of what info the banks have on you. Use it to get more choice of mortgages. Use it to make your money go further. Take the next step to improving your financial future with your free 30-day trial at experian.co.uk. Here at Freppy's Tex-Mex, you can definitely taste the freshness in our food. You should definitely come to Freppy's because it's a great place. You can bring your family, very kid friendly. All my servers are amazing, friendly people. Everyone here is just happy to serve and, and I think it shows. The thing that sets us apart is the quality and freshness of our food. And I think once you try it, you'd be coming back. I'm Joe Desario, co-owner of Freppy's Tex-Mex in Plainfield, New Jersey. Hey, my name is Jimmy Love and I'm here to tell you about an exciting new television show called Buy, Sell or Give It Away. Tired of waiting for those high-priced newspaper ads to print? You call them up and you have to wait two or three days for the ad to show up? Well, no more waiting. Every day, right here at noon, from 12 to 1, buy, sell, or give it away is going to be accessible for you to call in. Maybe you got a, a boat for sale. I'm selling my pet dinosaur. Maybe you want to sell your house. Give away some furniture to a family in need. Just give us a call. We'll tell everybody what you have for sale or what you're looking for, and your response will be immediate, and it's free. Hey, listen. Summertime is coming. Maybe you want to buy a, a travel trailer or, or maybe rent a travel trailer. Just give us a call. Buy, sell, and give away. Fantastic show. Don't miss it. Tune in every day for 12 to 1 right here at RadioVisionNetwork.com. Buy, sell, or give it away. Today's show has been sponsored by More Than Gifts. Come see our new location in Marlton, New Jersey. Not just gifts, but more. Well, welcome back. I'm Keith Reynolds, host of Morning Coffee here with my co-host Charlene Chamberlain. And we are talking to Dr. Gail Angelelli and Dr. Ruth Brenner of Audiology Partners about all the different ways hearing loss affects people's lifestyles. Yeah. And their exactly. health. Right. You know, during the break we were talking a little bit about um, well, we were talking about the um, music therapy, music therapy, and then we were talking about the coverage for hearing. Um, you know, you, so you were saying that the testing is covered by pretty much all insurances. Yeah, well, we're we're audiologists, so we work on a medical model, so we right. actually participate with insurance. There are okay. there are there you can see places where they have free hearing tests, free right. hearing screenings. Right. Um, we do participate with insurance. So Good. So speaking from that, right. yes, right. we, okay. we participate with. That's insurance. great. And then some of the now the hearing aids, it's getting better and better as it's being, it's being covered. Uh, more are covering it. Yeah. More are covering there's it. Discount but it's, plans. There's yeah. things like that. Not every. Not everybody. Some. some you know. Is not. But yeah, I guess you know what the scary thing is. You know, uh, driving home every day. If that person can't hear, you know, do they hear me beeping? Like, buddy, you're right. crap. You're me almost crabby. in my issue. Right. right. Sure. Exactly. It is. People. Uh, you don't know how many people don't hear their turn indicator. Oh. When they well, that's what, the, yeah. They have no idea what it sounds like. Right. I do. Wow. My, my wife always tells me that you're leaving your <laughs> <to> indicator. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I said I hear it. I just like I'm focused on the road. Mm -hmm. So, pretty interesting stuff. So, what do we have here? I, I, you know what I told you? It looks like my fishing uh, lures. <laughs> yeah, they do. Folks, they you do, know, right? but, that you will uh, have no problem getting one when you need one. That's right. No, <laughs> I think they're cool. These are yeah. um, actually we brought some. Uh, these are samples. These are um, they're they're, they're non-functioning, but um, there's actually a piece that goes in your ear as well. A speaker. Right. These are hearing aids, but yeah, right. these are the actual size of. They're uh, amazing. Of them. They're so small. Oticon is the uh, company we have here, but we deal with hold a variety this, of companies. This. Right. Um, but it, and set. this just sits behind your ear, and then there's a little speaker. Uh, and I have to do ear. this. I have to do this. This is unusual for me. One. He's gonna put no, one. I just want to show, like uh, you know, because my camera guy said, "Hey, move it out." Can you flip to this? Okay. Look how tiny that thing is. That's it. That's I mean, for you guys out it's there, like that, a bean, the size of a kidney. Macho or something. I mean, 
can we get like a little like print on it or something like you know <laughs> a skull get stickers skull and crossbones you well, we had that uh, uh you know what Huey lewis yeah Huey lewis um used to be one of the spokespeople for oticon years ago yeah. and and he had two different color he had an orange and a... Yeah, he just wanted it, I think. He want, no, he wanted to be able to tell the difference between the right and the left. Right, right. 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 but um, hey. that's like a, you know it was like I, a fashion statement. Yeah, yeah. why not? Yeah. Why not? I mean, you know how many times I put my left contact oh, in my right contact? Oh, I did contact? that this morning. <laughs> yeah. I, I did just, it this morning, you know what I mean? and you're so like, I think that's Because cool. they're the same color. They are you know? the same color. I also want to tell you that these are also Bluetooth compatible. So there's a device There's a device you can get that you wear that allows you to be talk hands-free with the sound going to both of your ears at the same time. You that's there's television crazy. devices, there's telephone devices, you have all of which are adaptable. Input to right that's from so the television right to your hearing aids. That's you know wonderful. what? I tell you what, if you could if they could take the technology and have that as your Bluetooth for your phone. You can. You can. You can that's what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, insane. You can stream your music from yeah. your phone right up through In your, your hearing, hearing aids. If you're on a plane, you can do uh, like a direct connect, you can plug uh, these you know the 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 device that uh, the streamer or whatever into the uh, the jack in the seat and stream your movies right through your hearing aids. Wow! So you actually like, are using them like you know earphones. That's like yeah. James Bondish, you know. What I mean? Right, but people don't that's realize so that, cool. and I think the people in and you know my age group are going to they're, they're going to embrace that kind of technology oh my gosh, yeah. because they're already using Bluetooth and mm -hmm. computers, and you can hook it. You can actually hook your hearing aid into the computer and watch a movie. You much older input. people don't necessarily want that kind of thing. But, but I have ninety-year-olds that yeah. have streamers, and they're using everything. That's wonderful. That's that really is real great. Cool. Yeah. Now I got now that fits on the back of your ear mm -hmm. over top, so you don't see it. And then there's a piece that goes it's inside. Very yes. thin wire, like speaker thin wire. wire. Okay. Like speaker wire. Yeah, so clear. now I guess that's set up for a certain level of noise to go through it or hearing right well we program them you program to the, to the uh, there's fine tune i mean there's depending on the level of technology there's a lot of adjustments that can be right made to right the because i just want to point out like I, I think there's and that's why we have folks you know from different industries come on and talk about it because the media always puts a slant on things now they had this big story come out about you know earbuds being bad for your ears because but if you blare them that's yeah, not really good for your, for your ears. ears. That's that's not right. you know what I mean. But there has been a lot of research on that, and they, it with noise exposure, you have to be exposed for like eight hours a day. Right. Okay. So these kids generally, even though they're maybe at, uh, above eighty, there is a limit on a on an iPad iPod uh, to how loud you can make it. So even if you were at the limit, I think it's like it's less than eighty five even though it sounds loud. Mm -hmm. And if they're listening a you know, total four hours a day, they're probably not going to show that type of hearing loss. Okay. Now, there's those stereo things in the cars that vibrate mm -hmm. everyone. Oh, my gosh. If they're exposed to that or, you know, other other things. But, you know, actually, like, farmers and things like that, they like have the highest machinery. rate of yeah, farm machinery, wow. uh, carpenters, and they have yeah. higher rates. Uh, musicians can. Oh, yes. Because uh, it's direct input. But, but, but with these, we're using a prescription. So it's based exactly. off the hearing right. loss. Exactly. Right. 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 Like and that's what I'm glasses. getting at. Right. I think yeah. people say, well, you know, I have this thing. Is How is it different from a, from a earbud? It's so much. It's night yeah. and day. And I think that's another thing. When people say, well, you tell me not to use the earbuds, well, why would I use a hearing aid? Right. And that's because that's a prescription. And you're getting your buds are bringing right. up all the sounds. Yeah, We're bringing only up bringing all up the, the sounds. pitches that, that are, are missing. That are now, right. that, now that brings my next question. Is there a particular, like, I'll use music. Is there a, partif a particular, uh, whether it's the bass, the whatever, that makes the hearing loss happen? You know, like, is it in your world, music? if you look at mm -hmm. it, maybe you look at it on some type of meter, you, know, you might call it something yeah. totally but different. On this, let's I can show you a little bit yeah, about let's that. Look at this chart. Yeah, let's see if we can get a shot of this. This is interesting. Yeah, this yeah. is. So when the sound enters the ear, and so, it so it'll go ear? through, yeah, go through that canal, okay. and then it goes to Ooh, the eardrum. Ear oh, <laughs> <laughs> just clean that out. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes up to the eardrum, and okay. then it goes to the three bones. Three back, bones? A little back, back a little bit. Back a little bit. Back a little bit. Right in there. Right there. Oh, right here. Yeah, that's the three bones, and then. That bone is attached to that that snail shell, kind of right there. Yeah, right that's there. the cochlea. That's in our ear. That's the yeah, cochlea. That's the cochlea. That's the inner ear. That looks and like That's where a those snail. hair cells I was talking about before are. Okay. The where that where the sound enters is is the high frequency region. Gotcha. The or the treble. As yeah. Okay. And, okay. and, and so what happens is that if you're re 
even whatever the sound is, high pitch, low pitch, it keeps impacting those little hair cells and they wear mm-hmm. out. So okay. you end up having more hearing loss in the high frequencies generally because that's the first place that the sound okay. enters and there they become, as I said, I think the easiest way to think about it, they actually just wear out mm-hmm. over, the, over the years. Right. And yeah. the low frequencies, most of the people we see with he- hearing loss due to aging are generally fine. And so they, they, they tend to have, so it's not really the, the pitch of the noise, it, it can be the loudness, so, okay. but um, probably, you know, just the aging factor is okay. the biggest one. And that results in, un, in reduced clarity. You just don't, un, you hear it, but you don't understand mumbling. it. Yeah. People right. say people mumble all the time. Yes. Right. Um, and then when you get into background noise, n- noise just blocks you out. Can't and hear you can't right. get, you're not getting the clear part. You're not getting the S's and the T's, mm-hmm. the meaning of the, the consonants. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Consonants well, I want to talk about that. We, we, uh, you know, we're going to take a quick commercial break because I, I want to finish up on that. That's pretty interesting stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. We'll be right back. Here, we have an attractive orange and a distinguished apple. The two similar, but opposites. Theory, a wingman is needed. Or perhaps, a wing lemon. A friend to the orange and an acquaintance to the apple, the lemon brings the two opposites together. See, with a little fresh thinking, the universe universe can be surprisingly smooth. When we make Beyond Natural Dry Dog and Cat Foods, we start with real meat as the first ingredient. We leave out corn, wheat, and soy. And we own where our dry food is made, 100%. Can other brands say all that? For nutrition you can trust and your pet will enjoy. Does your food go beyond? Learn more at PurinaBeyond.com. Fitzpatrick's. Deli Dine for breakfast and lunch. And at night, Gourmet Dine for dinner with entrees and specialty sandwiches including certified black Angus cuts of beef and wild-caught seafood, plus catering options for specialty events. Since 1989, Fitzpatrick's, your hometown place with upscale tastes. Apple Ridge is about freedom. Apple Ridge is about community. Apple Ridge is about home. Apple Ridge, everything you want, more than you expect. Welcome to your new neighborhood. Apple Ridge Senior Living. Enjoy a maintenance-free, affordable luxury lifestyle today. Visit AppleRidgeSeniorLiving.com and find out more about the Apple Ridge experience. host of Read All About It. I interview authors of all kinds about their journeys of writing and the struggles that they face. You can watch my show at 12 p.m. on Wednesdays. Tune in to Radio Vision Networks. We hope to see you then. Hi, I'm Jim Turpin, host of Your Best 50. Please join me every Thursday at 3.30 where we'll cover topics that are important to the baby boom generation and their kids, and let us help you make this your best 50. Today's show has been sponsored by Farmers Insurance in Voorhees, New Jersey. To protect your assets and the people you love, call Mike Skoranek, your local Farmers Insurance agent, at 856-336-2553. We are farmers. Bum, ba, dum, bum, 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 bum. Hi, good morning. <laughs> I'm Keith Reynolds. I'm back. Uh, we're back. I'm here with my show host, our co-host. There I go again with that show co-host. Show host. Well, show it's co-host. the same thing. Uh, Charlie I like Chamberlain. that show co. I'm the show, show co. You're the show co. Oh, I like that, that name. Show co. Show co. Oh, no, and thanks a lot. About, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> we're, we're talking about ear health. Am I going this way? Ear health. Yes. Nice. There you go. Ear health. Ear health. Yeah. Just hide your face. Yes. <laughs> Nobody knows what that is. Ear health. Just hide your face. Yes. And who, are we, and who are we here with, Char? We're <laughs> here around. with Dr. Gail and Dr. Ruth. Okay. Now we're on a first name basis yeah, right. here. Dr. Gail and Dr. Ruth. Right, from <laughs> Audiology Partners of Marlton. So, you know, we, we were getting really interested. We had our little chart up here. Mm-hmm. You know, future-wise, 
you know, I know with the hearing aids. They're so cool, all the um, different colors and everything. You know, but look, I, I care. They shave back something and then they give you 2020. Really not a fan of that because I think it, they say if you did it 10 years later, something's going to go on. Is there something for the hearing world that like maybe like if you're saying all the hairs die in there, that they sprinkle some fer fertilizer or hair <laughs> they are, they are hair studying. tonic. Yeah. They, they, are, they, are, they are studying, they are studying? Yeah, hair cell regeneration, but they're, really? they're, they're well, not. Well, you know, they have yeah. that They've been studying that since now, so. uh, 19, and since the, I guess, the 90s, because actually birds regenerate their hair cells. Really? Yeah, so they, all that oh. bird research That's has, interesting. has they, they now have been able to, um, put hair cells and, and again, whatever, with birds and some other animal, I'm not sure. Uh, I think rats, I think they've done it with rats too. And they have been able to generate hair cells. The problem is they don't go into any kind of a meaningful rose and rose things like and we stuff like do. That. So it's, it, yeah. you know, how it's gonna actually work. Yeah. But, they're, no. but the biggest thing is the cochlear implant. Is, uh, and that's where, uh, if, if you're completely deaf, yeah, let's talk about that yeah. a little bit. The cochlear implant is you, um, you have to have no usable hearing. No. Right that. And Not where does that where does that get implanted? It goes right into the cochlea. So that that, that right shell, shell, right. yeah, that right shell in, thing. It, they they wind it right around in it's a it's a an array a, a electrode array mm -hmm. and okay. it will stimulate all different areas, you know, the low frequency area and the high frequency area and send that information up to the brain. But you so. are wearing, a, there's a magnet, and you, there's a piece you put on the back of your head, and then there's a large device that you're putting over your ear as well. Right. But a it magnet. does give you, uh, my patients tell me, uh, we don't, we don't uh, program cochlear implants in our office. University of Pennsylvania. In the hospitals, yeah. major hospitals. Okay. But um, some of our clients do have one, and then they have a hearing aid in the other right. ear. Right. Um, and they, they, they say it sounds a bit mechanical, but they've come a long way. But yeah. they can hear. Better but than they can hearing hear. Right. Right. So they're fitting, That's they're fitting a lot of children. And again, uh, some of the research on, 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 on just the deprivation of the auditory and, and, and the effect on the, the brain mm -hmm. was with the kids with cochlear implants. Mm -hmm. uh, they, it, it, now they're fitting them really as soon as they can identify them. Some of the, they were waiting to do them at five to seven years mm -hmm. and they never came up to where the other children did. Yes. And they did actual physical tests called uh, auditory brainstem tests. You could see the slow pattern in the brainstem of the auditory information going through with and and they recovered to a certain degree but never to the to the level that the ch children that were they fit could, they under catch two. up yeah right. they just couldn't right. catch yeah. up okay now i think it's dr dr ruth down the <laughs> dr. 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 Ruth. every yeah, time i think of dr ruth <laughs> I, 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 I almost couldn't say, i wanted that, to yeah. say your last name but i was like okay sorry <laughs> didn't. dr ruth mentioned about uh right before the other break about um hearing different things like uh, different sounds, right? Mm -hmm. So when we do audio and kids with speech therapy, they like they can't say their S's or something. So they teach them how to say their S's. Now is hearing set up the same way? Because you were saying that you can only hear, like if you have hearing problems, certain things start to go. So is it the same thing kind of like in reverse for hearing? Like your S's start going away, what? Because you can understand your what people are saying. You just don't hear those. You don't you hear, hear those. those part of the word. Did the someone word. say cats or did they say cat? Sweep or sweep. So right. S's start going away. S's, those are the S's high, high, high S's. But isn't it kind of weird that that in some of the vocal, like when they're they can't say their their S's, T's, V's, stuff like that. You think it's related? Isn't some weird? of it is. Yeah, yeah some of it is. And and uh, there was some research with Phonak that. The children had hearing aids um, with hearing loss from, you know, they either had some, a lot of them had chemo, and it caused a high frequency loss, so they didn't hear S's. And they couldn't get, the speech pathologist could not get them to produce an S because they couldn't hear it. Right. And wow. they, Phonak developed something called sound recover, which shifted some of the information. They, it squeezed, compressed the octave, and brought that information down so they could hear it. Within a month, they were producing S's. Wow, nice. that's amazing. That's pretty that's cool. That's really great. Right. Yeah, so if we if we're finding, and you had said before, with the that some of these people, if you're if you get those sounds back cognitively, what they're actually seeing, and some studies are seeing improvement mm -hmm. um, once people are fit and they're getting all the sound back, that, that right. you can make some recovery. A lot of those, yeah, a lot of those studies were in France. They've done mm -hmm. a twenty-five year study. Hearing aids just happen to be part of it. It's a, it's a general study on uh, the geriatric, uh, I guess, in the University of Bordeaux. Uh, but they 
actually saw the difference between people with hearing aids and their cognitive abilities and people uh, that don't, because we haven't really done that research in the United States yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then they had another with the cochlear implants. Those people were classified with severe cognitive uh, issues, right. but they had no input. And mm -hmm. when they fit them, there was an 80% increase in their That's cognitive wonderful. abilities. Wow. Really so they, wonderful. They, Fran, the French have done a lot of research about brain hearing, and Oticon had uh, you know, a couple of them, them speak at some of their, because they're very interested in brain hearing. Okay. And you know, we talked a little bit before the show, and um, you mentioned that you, know, you don't hear with your ears, you hear with your brain, right? right. Yeah, it's really your it, brain. The input goes process. through the ears, Is that why but when we, we like interpret it, it's actually the brain. Right. And it's interesting. We've been more recently doing some hearing aid fittings where we actually incorporate some of the preferences for sound. Um, and I would have thought everybody, you know, I listen to a to someone talking in noise and and and. Uh, that had more of a high frequency emphasis, uh, like a tinny emphasis. Mm -hmm. Someone else had a more bass. And I thought, oh, well, we're, we're all normal hearing. We're all going to like that one. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we were split half and half. So mm -hmm. actually incorporating a little bit of what your user preference is yes, actually nice. makes a big difference in the fittings because we were always fitting very, you know, by the numbers. Right. You know, whatever your hearing loss is, we were going to return it. But now we're doing a little bit, we're actually taking some of the listener listening preferences into account and it makes for a really good fit because some people like bass, some people like treble, mm -hmm. some people like right. um, loud sounds, they like things like really intense, other people want, you it, know, want it softer. <laughs> yeah, but some people want a lot of noise reduction, some people want, it, want to hear everything. Right. So it, it's okay. interesting how all that's incorporated. Well, doctors, it was wonderful having you come on. I want you to tell the listeners out there where they can find you guys to get tested. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Or talk about their show hearing those stuff. One more time I am going to show. I'm, you know what? <laughs> I, I am going to show these one more time. Um, again, uh, I'm going to get up it's to like the camera. The size of a kid and <laughs> there we go. <laughs> All new. Look at these guys. I mean, they are so cool. Um, I'm going to get one that I don't have hearing problems. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but we know where you're going to use it for. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but tell the listeners out there and viewers where they can find it, find you. Uh, we're located in Marlton. Uh, we're at 851 Route 73 North. We're across from the Whole Foods on Route 73. <laughs> right. Whole Foods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's across where you're, from Whole Foods. Right you're, back there, from you're over by Dr. Nadia. Mm hmm Probably. Yeah. She, yeah. Does a, yeah. she does a show. Yeah. Oh, oh really? Actually. Yeah. She, she does a show on Wednesday. Wow. Oh, my God. It's always yeah. fun with Dr. Nadia. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we're going to be back after this commercial break uh, with our next guest. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. Awesome.